before looking forward, I'd like to actually look back. Um, one of the things I particularly liked and what I put in the abstract was that Maxwell, James Clark Maxwell, unified electricity and magnetism in 1865. So he produced a collection of field equations, which by itself is already very, very innovative. Uh, field equations that said that light and uh, the mag magnetism and electricity and so it seems quite soon light were all aspects of the same collection of forces the same phenomena and if we go from 1865 from the scholarly discovery to 1965 which is a period of 100 years we can see that there a large number of changes that would not have taken place without that unification taking place. The first, of course, was electrical engineering and the ability to, let's say, do calculations and predictions regarding the behavior of electromagnetic machinery, such as generating equipment. And, um, and large number of calculations and the electrification that took place at the end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century, has its foundations as in electrical engineering. And to this day, uh, the Institute, is it the IEEE, the Institute of Electrical Electronic uh, Engineering, is the leading body for computing in the United States. Uh, before there were computing departments, they could either live in hardware or software. Software was the maths department and hardware was the engineering department. Um, uh, not, neither is useful without the other. Um, it, it also led to relativity um, and uh, the quantum effects come from somewhere else, but it led to radio. And if we look at the purpose of print, radio is enormously important because I think it was in the 18th century or so, you started to get daily newspapers. And they were ways of disseminating information, large quantities, large numbers. And so you started to have mass production printing and you started to have a literate population and so forth. And in the 19th century, steam power was used to power printing presses. And the technology developed to get rotary printing presses. And I would say that by the beginning of the 20th century in Britain, you are having newspapers printing a million copies a day. And that was tremendous because it meant that suddenly could happen yesterday and the news for it could be in many people's many people could read about it breakfast the next day uh, i'm gonna take a moment out to tell a joke which is uh, somebody was driving the um back roads of um southern ireland and they saw a shop and they thought they'd like to have a copy of the newspaper so I said, do you have a copy of the Irish Times, whatever the newspaper was? And the person says, um, yeah, um, would you be wanting today's copy or yesterday's copy? <laughs> and the person thought for a moment and said, well, oh, today's copy, I think. Oh, in that case, he said, you'd be better off coming back tomorrow. And... <laughs> um, 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 that's not such a joke because postage stamps were used, posted, newspapers were sent by post. That was a large part of the postal stuff. It was sending printed matter, the special printed matter ray, precisely for newspapers and books. And um, uh, the one cent magenta postage stamp that is in the news today in the United Kingdom, because it's the most valuable postage stamp in the world, was used to send a newspaper. There was a special newspaper rate for printed matter. As, and 
in the middle of the last century, eight million copies of the News of the World are printed. It's a Sunday, so it came out every week. And the title itself shows the grandness of the vision. News of the World. And the New York Times is all the world, all the world, all the news that's fit to print, I think. Um, so, but radio was challenging print. You had radio broadcasting uh, on a regular basis, I think starting uh, in the 1920s. I think that's about right. And um, apart from anything else, through the medium of electronic valves, that laid the foundations for the first computers. The first computers were built using valves. So you, you have to you have to have a print uh, you have to have a paper industry before or paper production before you can have printing. You never have to have electronic valves before you can have uh, the old style um, computers that uh, von Neumann would physically recognise. So. I'm doing this to sort of try and get a sense of what will happen in 50 years, what will happen in 100 years. And my theme is 21st century typography. And that will be 100 years after the first tech meeting. That's the sort of time scale we might have some vision of, although I'll never see it happen. I won't be alive for that. So. 25 years back from now is 1996, which is the first version of the Tech Live CD, now a DVD. If we go forward 25 years from now, we get to 2046. And if we go forward another 25 years from that, we get to 2071, which is getting on for 100 years after Don Canoe started tech. It's certainly a hundred years after electronic phototype, photo, ele, ele, uh, phototype setting would be a hundred years old around 1971. And it was the deficiencies of phototype setting that led Don Knuth to do digital typesetting. So we're talking about what a hundred years is. Um, now, I think there's something very important to remember about Maxwell's equations which is that even though they're now about 150 years old, they're still as true as they ever were. And the only deficiency is that you haven't unified them with gravity. They've been unified with quantum mechanics, but they haven't been unified with gravity. So the sort of the truth and the value of the truth will continue perhaps in a changed form. So I don't expect the fundamentals of typesetting that Don Knuth discovered will change. They will be extended. The Unicode is one of the very big extensions of the fundamentals of typesetting. He didn't have time or expertise or wish or need to typeset all the world's language, languages. But the uh, computing revolution of which he was part in the last part of the last century uh, certainly did do that. So with that sort of background, I'd like us to think, well, what's going to happen, what's happened in the last 25 years as a way of, and what's going to happen in the next 25 or 50 years? 